coal. It actually removes heat from inside the building, leaving coal. Now that's done through the basic refrigeration cycle. There's an inside unit that captures the heat, transfers it into these lines that are filled with refrigerant. The energy goes through into this condenser right here, and a fan now pushes that heat up and away to atmosphere. Now in this case, heat is energy that is wasted. Today we're actually going to find a creative way to put that energy to better use. Hey, Jeff. Check hey, this Richard, out, Karen. This is a piece of heaven you've got back This is the video that I was talking about capturing the we heat from your air conditioning especially to warm your pool up. I grew up with a pool and I loved mine, but what I love about yours particularly, it's a perfect candidate for a system that can take the heat from the air conditioner and put it into the pool water. Well, that would be great because honestly, we've had a hard time keeping this pool warm enough. It's very shady back here. And we don't get a lot of sunlight. I researched other systems such as wood boilers and frankly, we don't have a south-facing roof. So we wouldn't be a good candidate for solar. Well, let me show you how this system works. Gotta show this to Lorenzo also. All right, so here is your pool filter system. It's a pretty standard package. You've got two lines that come from the skimmers at the pool right here, and they come together to go through this leaf strainer to catch any leaves. Now right here is the pump that's gonna push water through the strainer and right through this cartridge style filter right so here. Similar to your system so that you have right now. And it returns back to the pool right here. Now at the same time, you've got the refrigerant lines right here for your air conditioner, and these, this is going to have hot refrigerant. We want to get the heat energy from that pipe actually into the water that's down inside here. So for that, there's a pretty ingenious invention. It's actually a heat exchanger made exactly for this reason. You can see right here that the water from the pool will come in through a pipe right here that will go down to the bottom of the canister. The pool water will leave through this pipe and go back to the pool itself. There's a couple of refrigerant lines right here, and what you can't see is actually a coil that's down inside this canister. It's made out of titanium. That hot refrigerant goes through that titanium coil. It transfers its heat to the pool water. Now that does a couple of things. One, it's going to heat the pool water, which is great for you, but it also is going to make the air conditioner run more efficiently. Great. All right, so our plumbing connection is going to start with the pool water connections to our heat exchanger. I've cut away the existing PVC. Now this system needs to be able to monitor the temperature that's in the pool. So our first fitting is going to be this T fitting right here. You can see there's a threaded adapter. Gives you a there. thermostat. Into it, I'm going to install this sensor well. To monitor the uh, temperature well, of your pool we'll water. Put a sensor down into the well from this side, but you can see it'll make perfect sensing of the water temperature right there. That T is going to go right here. I'm going to dry fit all this stuff right now. When I get it right, we'll go back and glue it all together. So this comes right here, and there'll be a union connection right there. All right, now on this side, we have a two-inch coupling right here. And now we have another elbow and another half of a union right here. And now once we bring this together... So now you can see the path of the water. It leaves the filter, goes by the sensor, goes down into the heat exchanger. The heated water leaves from here and goes back to the pool. So now we can glue up these fittings. I'm putting PVC cleaner and glue on the outside of the pipe. All right, just hold it for about a three count. There's one. This canister is one of the additional parts to the existing system that you already have, Karen. So I remember if Lorenzo's system over there on Rutland, his air conditioning system is close to his uh, so Jim, heating unit. So the refrigeration unit. portion is a little trickier business. We've got to cut into these refrigeration lines, but inside of them they're filled with refrigerant. That's sometimes a liquid, sometimes a gas, always dangerous. So we can't let any of it leak out into the atmosphere. So we always have to have a licensed refrigeration tech, and that's exactly what David Conley is. Hey, David. Hello. So tell us what you're doing today. What I'm doing is I'm going to remove the refrigerant out of this air conditioning condenser, the lines, and the unit in the house using my recovery machine. All right, so the recovery machine is actually a vacuum pump that's going to pull, pull, pull everything out of the system and deposit in the tank right here, right? Correct. All the connections and then braze the joints. Brazing is a lot like soldering, but it uses a higher temperature gas and a different bonding material to be able to withstand those much higher temperatures and pressures that come in a refrigerant system. So, David, how are we doing? Good. Made all my connections. Crusher tested it to make sure it doesn't leak. So we are ready to recharge with refrigerant? We are. Good. Let's do it. Now, the last component of our system is this, a master controller. 
This is going to be the interface between the pool controller right here, our heat exchanger with its temperature sensor, and the air conditioning condenser right there. Now it's going to mount right on the outside wall, right about over there. Yep, perfect. All right, guys, so all of our connections have been made. The plumbing connection's right here. Refrigeration, we've got it wired. This is a really good time to go over the whole system. So now, whenever this air conditioner calls, it's going to check first the temperature of the pool to see if it needs to be heated. If it doesn't, then what happens is the basic refrigeration cycle that's always been here. That refrigerant comes down here, but it does one thing. It takes a little detour out through the back. You can see it comes right up through here, and it goes to this valve. It's a three-way diverting valve, and in this mode, the refrigerant comes right through back to the condenser. Now, that condenser comes on, the fan comes on, and dumps heat to outside, just like it always did. But if the pool says, I need some temperature, it'll send a signal over here, and then this valve will close this port, and instead the refrigerant will come straight through right here. It's a hot gas right now coming through here, coming through here, down through this heat exchanger. It's going to heat up the pool water right here, become a little bit cooler out here, go back into the house, picks up more heat, and the cycle continues. So now, with this all connected, you're going to pay the same amount for electricity for the air conditioning as you always have but you're going to pay nothing for the pool of yours. Well, that sounds great to me, Richard. That seems like the perfect solution to this shady backyard. I think it is. Thank you very much. Well, the thanks goes to you, Dick. Thanks for your good work. Thank you. i got to say, Richard, that's really cool new technology. Well, it's pretty cool, but it's not exactly new. In the commercial refrigeration world, they've been doing this for years. You walk into a supermarket, and what do you see? You see a bank of freezers. Well, somewhere in that building, all the heat that they took out of those freezers is being dumped somewhere, hmm. and they've been able to creatively reuse that to their advantage. I have a lot of swimming pools and supermarkets. No, but you can actually take that heat, and you can use it to heat other parts of the building or even heat hot water for faucets. Oh. So